So I'm going to tell you right here and right now, there are three types of certifications that I'd like to teach you. Now, there's probably many more, but the first type of certification is licensing. Now, what is licensing? Well, licensing can be somewhat of like a, a franchise or having the right to sell something. So if you're in the United States and you have a great product, you want to license it overseas, well, you have to certify them as a licensed broker, right? You have to certify them as a licensed seller. There's Apple licensed resellers, right? There's Microsoft licensed resellers. So licensing is a, is a great way. McDonald's is about licensing. It's a franchise, but they're licensing the McDonald's name, location, and you're paying for that. Not only for the location, which is very expensive and many times seven figures just to become a franchisee of McDonald's, but you got to go to Hamburger University and get your certificate of completion. So licensing is one type. Number two, accreditation. Now, accreditation, like licensing, requires learning and training. Now, typically in a trade association, if you are an accredited blank, whatever that may be, that means you went through some sort of certification. Accredited means you've gotten credit for being really good at this one thing because you've studied it, right? So accreditation is another form of licensing. You can look it up on Google or dictionary.com. And then a trade association has their own licensing courses within every niche, whether it's dentistry, whether it's um, roofing, right? Fixing roofs, whether it's plumbing, whether it's um, lawn care, there's a trade association for practically anything. Uh, the National Infomercial Marketing Association, I belonged to that in 1992. Well, if you went through their process, didn't make you a better infomercial marketer, but you were accredited as one. And that brings your level of status a little higher. The Better Business Bureau is a trade association which gives you an accreditation for paying for it. You know, member of the Better Business Bureau, good housekeeping seal, okay? If you fulfill their requirements, there's not much training, but you got to pay for it, right? You got to pay to renew your license, right? And if you're any kind of uh, licensed professional, you typically have to renew your license. It is a profit center. So we are not talking about, we as in Alex, I'm not talking about a how-to course, Okay, you don't get a certificate for a how-to course, maybe a certificate of completion, but it doesn't give you a higher level of status. What you need is to offer a certification so you can charge more and offer them more, not only on how to do something, but how to sell that how to do something. And if you know how to sell it and you want to teach people how to do it, then you become kind of like the franchisor. Are you with me now? Five mistakes made with most certifications, okay? Most people don't know how to do certifications. I didn't know how to do it, and I made all the mistakes. And what you're seeing is after 16 years of trial and error, this masterclass, which is only 30 minutes. So mistake number one is not having one. I don't care what business you're in. You are an information marketer, okay? And information marketing, marketing will give you freedom that you got into business in the first place. Isn't that why you got into business? If you're an entrepreneur, you got in because you wanted more freedom. If you're doing entrepreneurship on the side and you're in a, in a corporate setting, you're doing it for more, more freedom. But what did you find out? You are less free now than you've ever been before. Why? Because of life and business and you're now you're responsible for everything. So why not take that pain and get paid for it? Because you are doing things that you could get paid for and you could create a certification course just by documenting what you do. It is easier than you think. If that little voice on your right or left shoulder is talking to you saying, what is he talking about? Or I can't do this or, oh, come on. Okay, I'm not selling anything here. So you, you can be skeptical, but you can't deny the fact that I'm not trying to win you over in selling something. In fact, what I'm gonna give you is an assessment that starts the certification process, one that we use, and you can rip it off. You can copy it. You can apply it in your own area of expertise. And it has certain categories that are relevant to any business. Is that fair enough? You'll have to stick around for that. All right. Now, you're not going to get certified in watching this master class, but, but I should do that. Right. Now, not starting with a beta. Now, we had a conversion strategies coach certification program. 
At the time of this recording, it was a little over a year ago, and we offered a beta. Now, what's a beta? That means it's not the real thing. The reason we offered it internally, you know, to, to my house list, and we had nearly 100 people take it, and the reason we offered that beta is so we could get case studies, so we could prove the concept. So a big mistake is doing a big launch in something you haven't tested before. So we take out the kinks of that beta, and then we launch beta number two. And that's the next step that we would be doing. I, I recommend two betas, not just one. And the third one's a charm. That's where you can charge the big bucks. Mistake number three, not creating an exam. All right. It's one thing having what you call certification, course, or training. But if you don't have an exam, you know, ours was 88 questions. If you don't have an exam based on what they learned, right? Like the SAT exam here in the United States is what uh, high school students have learned to get into college, right? So you need some sort of an exam to test your level of competence. And for us, if, if someone scored 80% or better, which is a B, they would get certified. And if they wanted to be one of our conversion strategy coaches where we pay them, they had to be vetted and interviewed just like any other business. But we certified them. So they're one notch closer to, to getting a yes than people coming out of the blue, right? Next type of mistake is not mailing a physical certificate, right? So every certification certificate should have a seal. We had students for our beta conversion secret strategy coach certification, students on, on six continents, no one from Antarctica, thank God, because I don't think FedEx or UPS goes there, but on six continents, we physically mailed out these certificates. And I had people take pictures of the certificate on their wall. Isn't that cool? Sharing that on a Facebook group. And, you know, they were proud of that. It's a certificate. It's like a ribbon or a badge of honor, but it's worth so much time and effort, just like a college degree. And mistake number five is not offering a seal of certificate of, of completion. Now, a seal is what goes on your website. The Better Business Bureau is a seal, right? The um, Good Housekeeping seal is a form of certification. Right. You, you can see many, many seals, S-E-A-L, as in like a, a, a seal that goes on the certificate, letting someone know that this guy or gal has done something more than most. And then here's the uh, here's a, the sixth mistake. It's a bonus is there is no intake or an assessment to start the process. You don't just let anyone into your certification course. You have to have them go through a few hoops. And, and make it so that you disqualify some people because not everyone is eligible. They have to have a, 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 a some level of knowledge on your topic. Otherwise, people will be starting in, in, at different levels. You can't have advanced and a complete newbie go through certification. It won't be fair to the newbie. And the advanced person will be yawning the whole time because it's too slow for him or her. So an intake is what a doctor gives you, a dentist gives you, any professional. You go into their office for the first time. You take this little um, questionnaire and you talk about a doctor will, will ask you, hey, have you ever broken a leg or have you ever had uh, the measles or chicken pox or what medication are you on? And then the diagnosis is done after the intake. Now, if there is no diagno if there is no intake, then the diagnosis becomes very difficult and it's wasting the clinician's time. So you need an intake or an assessment. And that's the toughest thing that get people stuck in offering certification. It stops them dead in their tracks. By the way, that was for impact, all right? I do that for impact, all right? So if you had your volume high, uh, it got your attention. So, oh, by the way, let me, I have another confession to make. Here's my muse, this is Minnie, and I'm doing that for ratings. So when I bring her up, that's what keep, keeps people on because I have a face for radio. <laughs> all right, so when you have an intake or an assessment, then you know the type of people you're getting. Just like I took my surveys of those three surveys I told you about at the near the beginning of this show. I'm gonna give you an intake, an assessment that I've used for over four years. And you can borrow the questions, you can revise the questions, you can take it if you want, doesn't matter to me, but it's there for you to model, not just to take. 
Hey, it's Alex again, and thanks for watching this video. Now make sure to get that very special gift I promised you. I want you to grab your mobile phone and text the keyword you see on your screen and text it to this phone number, 415-980-3555. And make sure you stick around for another video coming up.